it just didn't turn it on. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, welcome to the first of the pre-con sessions for the 2016 Coast or, uh, ACPE conference. Where was I? <laughs> um, this is the next Inspire Next Generation Teaching and Learning, and we've got Converge One and Cisco to help kick this off, and I'll pass it on. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, appreciate you guys making it in this afternoon. My name is Donovan Dolph. I'm a product sales specialist with Cisco up in the Northwest. I focus on our unified communications portfolio. So all of our kind of voice, video, collaborative technologies fall into to my world, and I support our public sector customers, which includes education, K through 12, up through higher ed, and, and local government as well. So many of you um, probably leverage Cisco technologies today. We wanted to, to spend some time really focusing on the implications to the classroom. And I've got Dr. Lance Ford here going to be helping me share with you guys some more ideas versus just kind of technology specific conversations on how we can leverage capabilities that you might already have plus some new capabilities to, to really deliver a new type of education to the students that are, that are coming into the classroom for that. Lance, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself to the, to the folks here in the room. Awesome. Well, I'd be glad to do that. Welcome to Southeast Oklahoma, everybody. Uh, my name is Lance. Yeah, officially Dr. Ford. I will tell you like I tell everybody else, I really don't care what you call me as long as at mealtime you call me. Okay, that is the important part. Hey, you, uh, get over here, whatever. I answer to just about anything. It really doesn't matter. Um, what I do is I get to work with educators globally, K-12, higher ed, corporate trainers, Government officials, I just wrapped up working with some faculty members from Southwest Baptist in Baltimore, Missouri, about 15 minutes ago. Uh, earlier this week, I had folks in Ireland of uh, my job, because while I get to work with folks all over the world, I get to choose where I live. Now, can you guys see this okay? Okay. I jokingly told folks earlier, I am actually coming to you from a porta potty in Southeast Oklahoma. Not quite a porta potty but close. There are this many streets in my town. At the corners of those streets are this many stoplights. <laughs> All right? I'm going to zoom in. I know exactly how long it takes to get to school every morning unless I get behind a chicken truck and then all bets are off. Anyway, I'm in this red roof building right here. This is my classroom slash office. This is my wife's classroom right there. Playground doubles as a softball diamond. Railroad track is about a half block away. The building I'm in has been standing here since 1937. So if the train comes through, you're going to know about it. It sounds like it's coming through the door. Um, school let out about 15 minutes ago, so you may hear some not-so-nice things from students' mouths. It's a public school. Uh, come through the door. Uh, whatever happens, I'm so sorry. I'm apologizing up front. Uh, we use these tools all day, every day in our classes, and I appreciate Donovan let me join you guys like this to talk a little bit about it. So, Donovan, that's... That's who I am and what I do, my friend. Perfect, Lance. Thank you. And then, you guys, Rick. Yeah, so, uh, thanks. So, so, I'm Rick Schilling. I'm also the area manager for Converge One, formerly known as Mountain States Networking, if you recall that name. Uh, we've been here, a diamond sponsor at the, at the ACPE for several years. So, appreciate you coming here. We're privileged to have Cisco and, and Dr. Ford to be able to present here today. So, I thank you. And then, uh, William. William Stevens, I'm account manager with uh, Convert. First time at ACPE, so I'm happy to be here and experience it all and certainly look forward to the presentation. Yeah, and Brad Jackson, uh, I run the uh, pre sales engineering organization for Converge One. Been here for just a few months, six months, after 17 years at Cisco as an SE and SEM. So happy to see everybody. All right, very good. So, Lance, I will kind of turn it back over to you. We'll get things started. We've got a few of the folks here in the room that have been able to join the Spark Room. If you guys want to continue to interact within that room during the session, please feel free. Yeah, so let's talk about what we're doing here today. I and mean, the easiest way for me to, to define it is to tell you what we're not doing. This is not meant to be the Lance dance for the next 45, 50 minutes. 
Okay. I really want your feedback. I really want your questions. I want you to be brutally honest with me. And just to set the stage to tell you how open I am, I am 47 years old. I got a ball spot the size of a dollar on the top of my head. I weigh 250 pounds, and I've been married to the same wonderful woman for 23 years of my life. You're not going to hit me with anything that's offensive to me. Um, I'm a get-her-done kind of guy. I drive a three-quarter ton extended cab pickup with four-wheel drive. That's a bullet hole from the inside out. We'll talk about that some other time. <laughs> In the driver's side door. But I, there's, there's no way you're going to make me mad or upset me, so I want you to just ask me questions. Um, I also want you to know that I'm coming to you across the public Internet today. There's no special circuit. There's no special prioritization of packets. I'm coming to you from that school. Uh, we'll go outside here in just a few minutes and kind of look around, but th that's where I am. Any questions so far before we talk a little bit about how this gets used in classrooms? Not yet, Lance. Okay, so just real quickly, one of the things that happens to my wife and I every day, seems without fail, we look into the eyes of students and we're getting some of this. Okay, when I get that kind of feedback, I immediately know this is E, this is A, something they don't understand, or something that everyone needs to be able to review later. So I don't stop class, I don't go to a special room, I don't put on any equipment. I just simply hit a button. Five, four, three, two, one later, we are recording this content. Now, from a network perspective, because we are a complete Cisco shop inside and out, from a network perspective, this stuff is getting recorded on the fly. And the reason I said a network perspective, because sometimes people record things like today with an iPad. Once that is recorded on that iPad, then the fun begins. You guys who have taught and tried to record stuff, or you're doing flip lessons or whatever currently, you know what I'm talking about. Now I gotta upload it. Now I gotta copy and paste and bed code. Now I gotta send out email. Now I gotta make sure I got all the formats that all my end users need to have access to as a part of this equation. For me, I started it, I did the teachable moment, I stopped it. If I wanna start it again, I'll hit the button again, record some more. It's really, really not rocket science but it's automatically starting to distribute through this workflow. Now, as I go through some of this stuff here today, I'm gonna to show you when some of these links are actually live and that you can go watch this stuff on the fly. And if you're in the Spark Room, I will share it out to you as a part of the process. The first thing that happened was, there's me, big ugly me, my big fat head right there, chewing the fat with you guys. There you are, immediately to my side on that image. When I bring up my laptop, or my document camera, or my iPad. Heck, we use this to teach video production, my green screen room. I bring up any of that stuff, the talking head gets small, the content is right here to the side. Maybe it's a math problem. We bring in a chemistry class, advanced placement chemistry class from a college 90 miles away. All the labs have the ability to connect at once from all the lab stations in that classroom back to the instructor. He can see exactly what's going on. They share their lab results in real time, right? They record those moments of real-time instruction, just like this. So anything that's a part of this equation is now a part of that recording. Does that make sense so far? Do you guys have any questions for me? Come on now, surely somebody got something. There's a question. Yeah, I see that name. What is yeah, it? So one of the reasons I didn't download and install the program is because it wants access to my entire phone. Why is that? Great question. So the, the app that is Spark also allows you to place SIF-based calls via the internet from that device, audio and video calls. The reason it asks for access to your phone is so that you use the camera and the microphone to place an IP-based call from that device. Provided you have contacts in that phone that are from other folks that you can call directly from it, it was gonna pull those contacts into that into that environment as well. Those are the things that I am aware of that it actually pulls from my phone when I install. Donovan, you wanna, is there something else that I'm unaware of? There, there's one more, Lance, and I'll share that now. So the last piece of that is the calendar integration. And there's some yes. things we do there to tie the calendar together, really to deliver a, a seamless joint experience for your, your calendar invites. So, so I can share this when we're done here, but being able to access that calendar from within that app allows me to join via video, but very quickly from that same app to a meeting, join via our WebEx capability. So, 
Very, very good question. Very astute observation. And ladies, come on in. There's some, I promise I don't spit. So come on. There's some seats down here on the front. Oh, you won't even feel me there. <laughs> we have one more question here, Lance. Yeah, come on, come on. So I, I installed the app, and I can't find Lance Ford for the room here. So yeah, I want to add you to that room. So I can, I can do that here. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get you added, because I want to show you guys something. Um, in our class, we, like I said, we create these recorded teachable moments, and we use this tool for a lot of different things that we're going to explore in the next 45 minutes or so. But this creating of the recordings on the fly and then distributing them is absolutely mission critical. So let me show you. Um, I created a recording. I'm going to go into my media. I'm going to go into my videos as a teacher, and I'm going to sort these based on today's day. All right. Here's the recording that I just made. It is not active yet because as a teacher, I don't necessarily just want the stuff I do automatically being made active for people to see. I'd like to have a little more control over it than that, right? So I do. I want to say settings, let's make this active, and let's make this public and safe. Now you guys who have been interested have joined the Spark Room. That's where you would be as a class member for me. You'd be inside the Spark Room. I'm going to hit sharing. Share to Spark. Now, when I hit Share to Spark, immediately my video repository went across the public internet. Starts saying, "Okay, based on your single sign-on, you're Dr. Lance Ford, right? Yes, it's negotiating that. Then, okay, since you're Dr. Ford, here are all the rooms that you're a member of. Which room of the list of rooms do you want to actually share that video to? I'll drop this down. Uh, let's find our <coughs> ACPE Cisco, it's ACPE Cisco Collaboration Room, right? That's right, Lance, right there in the middle. All right, and I'm going to hit send. Now inside those of you who have joined the Spark Room, at this particular juncture, you just got posted a brand new link. You just can click the link on whatever device you're on and watch the content. Now, it does have audio and video, so I'm just telling you, if you've got your audio turned up, you can listen to me twice. Once is bad enough. Twice is just downright obnoxious. Okay, so feel free to turn me down on your device. I didn't ask you to. Uh, I didn't ask you to go through a bunch of hoops. I just asked you to be a member of my class, which is what you did by joining this Spark Room. You became a member of my class. Does that make sense? Because if I can't demonstrate this in the real world, then it really uh, it's not worth its salt to me. It's got to work. Questions for me so far? Come on now. How long is the video behind? Good question. So the video you're watching right now is actually the link, is the recording that we did a few minutes ago. You're not watching a live stream of that on your phone. You're actually watching a link of a teachable moment. So gotcha. like in class, I'm working math problem. I grab that. I get shared to Spark. They've got it. That's what you're watching right now. It's not the it's not the live class. We can talk about that though if you'd like to. What's controlling the different camera angles? Awesome question. I wish I had right, eyes. So, <laughs> so I do not have anybody here with me, and I'll be honest with you, I, I'm not wearing anything. I don't have any special buttons that I'm pushing, but I am going to bring my iPad into this so I can actually show you what's going on. Now, for those of you who are looking at these two things side by side, just real quickly, this bad boy over here, room-based system, two megs of video call, for those of you who care, on the public internet. iPad, Gen 2, 256K, wireless, through my firewall, and thank you, SEPA compliance, without negotiating via my, uh, my filter, all right? So let's do this. Let me show you what's going on. Can you see that? Yep, yep. Okay, so that rectangle behind those two cameras is doing audio triangulation. It's actually a microphone. It is finding where the voice is coming from in this room, or voices, if there were multiple people. Those two cameras are doing facial recognition. 
So once the microphone triangulates the position of the person in the room, the camera says, let's find the two eyes, the nose, and the mouth that are making that sound, and let's move the camera. You see, you just kind of found me, hiding out back here. <laughs> um, it finds the face and moves the camera to that position. So that's what's happening in my room. I'm not wearing anything. I'm not stepping on any mats. I'm talking to you here. I leave camera as a teacher because I don't stand still very often. It's just one of those things about me. The secondary camera goes, uh-oh, where'd he go? Provides a wide shot of the room, so starts trying to find me, and okay, then switches to me as a part of this so process. So this is, wow, well, this is what so makes it what, seamless for me as a teacher. It's not to worry about somebody pressing exactly a cool. button or I'm not wearing to. something or anything like that. It just, as best it can, keeps up with me as I ebb and flow around this space. So that Great observation. 10 seconds it took to find you, is that about normal? So I actually had my face, when I walked over here, I had my face like this without thinking about it. And so it's going, all right, I do not see any two eyes, nose, and mouth talking to me because I was about to do something when I turned around. And then it said, oh, there he is. Boom, boom, and found it. Typically, I find it somewhere between three and seven seconds. Uh, and it learns the room as you go. It actually starts figuring out where people are. It's built to have a classroom of students like you guys or people around a table and it learning the spaces and then doing boom, 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 boom. I'm using it for something completely different, which is being up and around and navigating the space. And, and I would suggest, so come by our booth at some point during the rest of the week and we'll talk about kind of the technology behind that in more detail. And something that addresses kind of Lance's comment about his, him using it a little bit differently, we, we do have yeah. some capabilities there that help with the scenario of a bit teacher in the front of the room wandering around, right? <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. This truly is water. Okay, and, and yes, that's how much of it there is left. I'm almost done for the day. <laughs> so those cameras are provided by Cisco as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's, what's the like model name? Speaker track. And again, any, any of kind of the detailed technical aspect of things, we've got folks here all week. We can definitely dig into more detail on that if you want to come by the booth. So let's do this real quick because I... I hear some of the questions, and I'm not going to try to get all of the take weeds as a part of this conversation, but just so that the ground is level, and you can use this as a starting point, here's my room, okay? Everything in my room comes back to the device to which you are connected. My cameras are into that device. My laptop can be wirelessly or hardwired into that device. My iPad, I have a document camera, because some of the things I teach teachers are physical devices, how to manipulate things to make them work the way they want. Heck, I've even got a green screen <coughs> attached in here. So every time I walk over, looks like I'm leaving camera for a second, there's an itty bitty little white pad right here. And it's got a button on it that says share. It's got another button on it that says record. That's what I did, I pressed record, and when I shared my laptop, I hit share. <coughs> That's why you were seeing it now. Now for those of you who are in the Spark room with me, I'm gonna share this directly into that Spark room. So again, if you're in Spark, you just got a new link that says join me on this whiteboard. You're more than welcome to click on the board. I will tell you this, it is live. The board is live. If you write some obscenity up there, we're all gonna see it, right? Just share that with you, right? But this, uh, if you're on an iPad or a smartphone, it's a lot easier to do it on that than like a laptop that doesn't have a touch screen. Over here to the side are pen tool colors. You can choose a pen tool, and you can start drawing right out here in this space with me. Feel free to do that. This is what we expect from collaboration. Don't expect to physically be in the same space at the same time with everybody. I expect to be able to contribute regardless of where I am geographically. Okay. We use this tool for uh, live classes from East Central University, from our regional college, and from the Choctaw Nation. My wife has a room full of round tables, and in that room she will have 30 students. 
Each of those 30 students is probably taking a different class, even though they're all in there at the same time. They're involved in individualized classes. It's a hybrid environment. Some of it is live synchronous on the iPads and the laptops they have. Some of it is asynchronous. It's, it's, a, it's a hybrid situation. So we expect to be able to do these collaborative things on the fly as a part of the classes we deliver. Questions? Come on now. Sounds like Charlie Brennan's teacher next door. Lance? Lance, there was a question in the Spark Room. I appreciate that. From uh, somebody asking about sharing content directly in the room. So I'm going to, from my iPhone, just share a document from Box directly into that Spark Room. So absolutely, on my, my Mac, I can just drag and drop something into there. I can share a PowerPoint with you. Many of those documents are rendered right there directly in the app. So, so I will do that now and, and share that. <coughs> Feel free to put a YouTube, if you've got a YouTube video of something going on, cool at your school, or something out there that uh, is publicly accessible, and that you'd like for the rest of us to see. And when Donovan said, this is going to be a common watering hole for this team, I'm not even going to call it a class, I'm going to call it a team of people for the duration of this conference, that's what he meant. You guys are going to be going to amazing presentations, unlike mine, right, where you're really going to be going, oh, this is so cool, I found out about blah, blah, blah. Use this as a source of collaboration. Take a picture from the phone. Put it in here. That's what this is about. This is about true collaboration. That's why we've given you the tool from the get-go. Questions? Come on now. Surely somebody else got some. So the drawing, once I clicked on the link, it actually is wanting my email to create an account and do all this extra stuff. So we have to jump through those hoops to... Once you do it once, you should not. And it should use your Spark credentials. So you got That's correct. So the email that you used for Spark should be the email that it's asking you for as a part of this process. Good, good observation. And I, and I will tell you this. I intentionally told Donovan as we started down this process, I don't want anybody to have to preload as much as possible. I want this to be a live experience. The things that we are doing in the compressed time of an hour today, I don't trickle out all at once day one of class, right? We may get Spark up here, we may do some collaborative projects. Then I'm gonna have them make some recordings, or I'm gonna make some recordings, we're gonna post it. Then maybe a two or three days later or whatever, we have a whiteboard session. So I'm hitting you like a fire hose, uh, right this second, with a whole lot of different things because we're in a pretty compressed window to experience it. Question. Yes, what options are there for authentication? So if we're going to have students logging into this and you know the experience we're having just trying to catch up and play along, how can we make this as seamless as possible for our staff and students? Very you want good. to tackle that, Don, or you want me to? I, I can definitely tackle that one, Lance. Yeah, absolutely. So very good question. And kind of the experience that you guys have in the room now is the kind of commercially available public freemium offer, which just uses email address and then that email back for initial authentication. In a kind of enterprise production deployment, we would integrate with your single sign-on services that you already have to tie together both authentication and directory services that kind of make this much more seamless. So, you know, scenarios we can talk about later are just kind of automatically adding students via your student management system into a room at the start of the school year or the quarter or the semester so that that piece of it is just kind of masked, mm -hmm. right? So, so much of the initial process that you guys are seeing today is very different given just kind of the public consumer type of nature of the situation we're in now versus an enterprise production deployment where you might be long term.